Midway takes us back to battle-torn front lines, but not in the way you might expect from a World War II film. Washington disagrees. Washington is wrong. On this IMD Brief, we break down how director Roland Emmerich and writer Wes Took blend historical accuracy with a little Hollywood magic in Midway. And I want people to watch this movie and say that couldn't have happened and then go back and see that it did and then start to process what these people went through. Screenwriter Wes Took steers the storytelling on Midway by sticking as close to the facts as possible. With a massive amount of research, including first-hand accounts and footage shot on the battlefield, he builds a framework of heroic human moments that actually happened during the Second World War. That was like kind of the first time I did that, you know, that I had like kind of a movie where I couldn't uh, just like change the ending, you know. And there was a, comes with a certain responsibility with it when you like kind of want to put a monument to these guys so they're not forgotten. Director Roland Emmerich has a pedigree in planetary destruction blowing the doors off Hollywood with blockbusters like The Day After Tomorrow, Independence Day, and 2012. While Midway has its fair share of explosions, the film begins in a very un emmerich way. At a 1937 meeting of minds between the Imperial Japanese Navy Admiral Isoroku Yamamoto and Naval Intelligence Officer Edwin Layton, played by Etsushi Toyokawa and Patrick Wilson. The scene adds context to how Japan and the U.S. would first lock horns on December 7, 1941. With an epic cast of characters, Emmerich switches between perspectives on both sides of the Pacific theater conflict to represent how the Battle of Midway was fought by land, sea, air, and even basement, where Leighton and his code-cracking team spent their time trying to prevent the Japanese element of surprise. Mandy Moore plays Anne Best, the wife of a daring dive bomber who's stationed at Pearl Harbor and a symbol of America's home front, left shocked and awed by that day which will live in infamy. The US military didn't want to be caught unaware again, so Admiral Chester Nimitz, played by Woody Harrelson, puts his faith in Leighton's hunch. The Japanese are planning something bigger. So what's the target? We believe it's Midway. The Japanese strategy was to surprise attack the tiny Midway Atoll, much like they did at Pearl Harbor, then to push their naval forces closer to the eventual invasion of the West Coast. Although American forces were outnumbered four Japanese aircraft carriers to their three, 150 support ships to America's 50, an impossibly heroic strike by U.S. fighter pilots turned the tide on the battle and dealt an enormous blow to the Japanese Navy by sinking all four of their carriers. This isn't a fair fight. Ed Skrine plays little-known Lieutenant Dick Best, a heroic squadron commander in the skies, while Dennis Quaid is at sea on the USS Enterprise as Vice Admiral William Bull Halsey. Well, I'm a student of history, so I knew a lot about Bull Halsey before I, I did this film. Since the actual Midway Atoll is only about two square miles of land with another 23 miles of lagoon, not much of the battle could be fought on the ground. But a certain Hollywood legend was there on land with a camera in his hand. Well, I think any good director would do that. Commissioned as a commander in the Naval Reserve, six-time Oscar winner John Ford directed documentaries, training films, and straight-up propaganda for the U.S. military. You can't fool me with that star-studded front of yours. With over two decades of directing experience, a pair of masterpieces under his belt, and pushing 50 years of age, Ford seemed like an unlikely candidate for the front lines. But when the Secretary of the Navy and the Secretary of War asked him to film Pearl Harbor after the devastation, he went. Then he unknowingly hopped a destroyer to Midway, just in time for the Japanese to attack. Ford was injured in the fray, or as he put it, knocked me goofy for a bit, by a Japanese Zero that bombed a bunker near where he was shooting. The moment is caught on film and included in his Oscar-winning 1942 documentary short, The Battle of Midway. Back at Midway, Tojo swore he'd liberate the natives. Let's be just as free as they ever were. 
Imrican took reference Ford's doc while researching the script and include a nod to its influence by recreating the heroic and historic moment for Midway. The line he says is a real line. He said, I think I've been hoodwinked. You know, I don't, I don't think that anything's gonna happen here. And they said, actually, the way we're fortifying this place, I'm pretty sure something is. It's a little bit like my nods to Apocalypse Now. I didn't put myself in the movie, but like uh, I put John Ford in the movie and he was in Midway during the attack and got injured. Can you imagine that? Yeah. Ford got his shot while Imrick and Took got their homage to old Hollywood, wrapped in the real history of Midway. For more trending tales, stay glued to imdb.com slash imdbrief. How did you shoot that? With a camera.